Hi, I'm Libby. I am the Head of Planning at iProspect here in the UK and I'm joined by Hannah Richardson from SNAP who leads Market Science. Marketing Science? I look after retention measurement but in Marketing Science team, yeah. Hi everyone. Um, and we're here to talk about how you, by building max attention you can build your so social influence. So thanks for joining us. Um, I am aware that this is probably the last thing you're doing before going to the party. Um, so we won't, you know, we won't drag on, but just wave at us if we do, because we can both talk about attention for way too long. Um, so, without further ado, um, I know there's been loads of attention on attention at this year's MadFest. There's even a stage called the Attention Stage. Um, there's lots of people talking about it, but at Dentsu, we genuinely believe we've got um, the rights to be leading talking about attention. We have been working with Queen Karen Field, we've even got Sir Mark Whitson has jumped on us, we've been working with Lumen for a number of years, and we're now working with SNAP. Um, so, Hannah, why is attention so important um, to Snapchat? Um, so, there's a few reasons, really. Um, I think the first one is that it's not necessarily a new thing, right? It feels like a bit like a buzzword of the moment, and everyone's talking about it, but we've always been trying to capture the attention of consumers with the ads that, that we're that we're putting out there. Um, I think obviously currently the the kind of viewability way of measuring an opportunity to see is not necessarily reflective of whether someone's actually looking at an ad um, or they're paying attention to it. And I think having a base in real human like measurement of real human responses is, is a really, really important thing rather than just purely looking at digital signals when it comes, comes to um, measuring people's responses and obviously attention, a lot of the attention measurement um, that we have been involved in and the research we've been doing has had that at its heart. I think the other thing is that attention is a really, really great measure of advertising quality. Um, and we know that kind of quality ads are much more likely to lead to outcomes, right? Um, and kind of a bit of a segue on that point is that I think it's really, really important to remember that attention isn't the outcome itself. So attention is like the vehicle that helps you get to where you need to go, whether that's brand lift, whether that is sales lift or whatever it is that you're trying to achieve for your particular advertiser. Attention isn't the end result. And I think that's a really important thing for us to remember when we think about it. It just makes it a lot easier for us to get to the end result that we're looking for. Um, and what about the work that you've been doing? I know you were on stage earlier this week, uh, Tuesday, um, but we've done some research together at Stensu and Snapchat, looking at the attention that the formats build, but what are, what's coming next? So yeah, we've done loads of stuff historically over the past kind of few years, mostly in lab research historically, um, with a number of different providers, including uh, working with you guys really closely and with Lumen. Um, so we've got a really great bank of research that helps us understand how Snapchat as a platform and the kind of way people interact with our platform, but also the different formats we have um, drive attention. I think where we are now trying to, to kind of move our attention in addition to kind of continuing to build out that research base is really being able to take it out of just in lab um, and bring it out into the marketplace. So people can actually measure the performance of their campaigns and their ads on Snapchat um, when it comes to the attention that they're driving. And that is um, something that we are currently working on with Lumen, um, who you've obviously partnered with um, in the past. Um, and yeah, it's super exciting. So like, it's pretty new, it's, it's in kind of alpha phases of measurement, but if you guys are super interested in being able to prove attention or your clients are, like definitely come and chat to us and we can talk about how that works and how we can get it set up. But essentially, being able to take all the research we did, we did a huge proof of concept to demonstrate that those two things, so what we see in lab and what we see in reality when we go out into field actually are telling us the same and it kind of corroborates the research that we did, but it also allows us to kind of really think about how we can optimize those campaigns in future to make sure that we are as attentive as possible. Now, um, we love experimentation at iProspect. It's one of our kind of core beliefs as an agency. And, you know, we're talking now about testing and, and going in out of lab, um, lab environments. When we spoke earlier in the week to prep for this call, we talked about how still Snapchat maybe is seen as a bit of an experiment itself by some advertisers. You know, it's like, oh, AR, it's new. Let's, let's do something there. 
how do you think this research can help kind of drive more uptake of some of the creative formats um, across Snapchat? So I think if we go back to that point around attention kind of being a product of advertising quality, we have really dived into the different formats that we have available at Snapchat. So think about our commercials, um, obviously AR, and then um, our kind of snap ads and other formats as well. What we were able to prove through the research is that those premium formats, so commercials and AR, are like hugely immersive in terms of the outcomes that they come. So I think something that actually came from one of the studies that, that we did together was that if you um, look at the attention driven by AR, you would have to deliver between 14 and 20 standard video ads to get the same level of attention as one single AR ad. And it kind of makes sense, right? If you think about you're choosing to engage and immerse yourself in that format and that experience is very different to the kind of experience that you would get from a video ad, for example. So I always like to use the example of a sofa. So you imagine you come across an ad for a sofa and it's, you know, a style that you like and something that you want to see. You might spend a little bit of time engaging with it and thinking about what it might look like, but you're definitely not going to spend the same amount of time that if you, were, if you could take that sofa and put it in your own front room and kind of move it around, see where it fits the best, um, change the colour, change the pattern, all of those things. So the, the level of immersion, the level of tension that you give to those formats is, is much higher. I think it's quite remarkable, really, what that kind of technology can, can give us when it comes to, when it comes to engagement. Um, so I think that's definitely something to think about. We obviously love AR at Snapchat. Um, but there's also, um, more broadly, I guess, a few guidelines about making sure when you're using our formats, you're using them in the right way um, to make them as effective as possible. I think the first thing to remember with that is going back to the experimentation piece is it's great to have guidelines and best practices, but you absolutely should go and test what works specifically for you and for your client because everyone is nuanced and there's slight differences. But if we think about commercials, for example, they're very, like our platform, people are sound on, right? So make sure that you're taking advantage of that sound, but you're also having subtitles there for maybe the people who, who aren't listening to it sound on. And because of the fact that they're non-skippable, right? You have to capture attention from the first second, but you've got those six seconds to really be able to land your message with consumers. We should be really making sure that we're taking advantage of that entire, that entire length of time. I think for AR, something that's important is obviously the more immersive, the better, right? Make it fun for people, make it super engaging, but don't forget that you also need people to know that it's from you. So make sure it includes your logo, make sure it includes all of those things so that you, know, you get that immersion, but you also get that kind of that memory and that brand association as well. Uh, in terms of then, so lots of recommendations, and if anyone wants to see some great uh, AR lenses, there's some of our examples from our clients. Um, here, but in terms of them bringing that creatively to life, obviously we've talked a little bit about attention and we've talked about kind of that is a driver to wider outcomes. That shouldn't be our KPI for a campaign. And of what recommendations do you then have for advertisers when it comes to measuring some of these things and, and going from beyond just this AR being an experiment to this is a core part of our marketing plan? So I think obviously it's really important just to start with what your KPI is for your advertiser, right? And then everything needs to kind of build out from there. But in terms of, of if we put it in the context of attention, there are a few different things that, that we're kind of thinking about at the moment. Firstly, obviously, is the attention measurement solution that we've just, we've just started doing that really allows us to understand the opportunity that we have in terms of driving attention. But we've also done a lot of work to demonstrate the link between that attention and outcomes when it comes to brand. So we were able to demonstrate that if you have high attention from, from your ads and you're able to meet a certain threshold, you are three times more likely to get statistically significant lift in brand outcomes and like 20 times more likely to get ad recall and ad awareness than if you don't have that attentive, attentive content. So I think understanding how attentive your formats are and how attentive like your particular creative and campaign is, is really, really important. But I think there's a few other things as well. So it's also, I think, an interesting discussion is thinking about how we can start bringing attention into broader measurement as a whole. So my colleague actually wrote a really great article on this recently um, and talking all about how we can start thinking about attention when it comes to something like MMM. 
So a lot of us use MMM to be able to prove the value of the, the channels that we use, the formats that we use, the campaigns that we run. But all impressions are kind of treated the same, right, when it comes to MMM, and we know that that's not necessarily true. So often those premium formats that we know are super engaging might be not underrepresented, but essentially aren't reflected particularly well in that because the CPMs are higher. But actually when you look at the efficiency when it comes to driving attention and driving engagement from those channels, I think we the proof of concept we did showed that they was AR was like six times more efficient in terms of driving attention than some of the others. So once you're able to take into account the kind of the value of that view or the quality level of that impression, that gives us a much more reflective picture of, of the outcome. Um, so that's something that, that, you know, we've kind of been thinking about. I think the last thing <laughs> is uh, we've also kind of, as, as, an, as a company, been working more broadly with people like the IAB and stuff like that to work on general guidelines for how you should think about measurement um, for attention and AR, et cetera. So um, yeah, I think there's lots of opportunity about how you can make sure that you're understanding the true reflection of your ads when it comes to attention. Well, you touched there briefly on kind of the cost. Do you think because Snapchat has some of the more premium formats that that often gets cut first because it's not seen as more efficient when it comes to MMM because attention is not being looked at? I think, it, again, I think it kind of, I know I'm like, keep going back to not directly answering it but I think it comes down to what your KPI is right so like as long as you're setting up your campaign in the right way to to be able to answer your particular KPI and and we can kind of help recommend on what that setup should look like you should be able to demonstrate the success but yeah I think in all instances where you know we're not necessarily measuring something in the most effective way we're not going to be able to understand the true value of what it is that we're doing and I think that needs to to change. Um, thank you. Um, I mean, we obviously have got some examples here. We love the creativity that, that Snapchat can kind of bring to start building, capturing both attention but working towards some of those outcomes and also building influence across different types of social platforms. I think it's really keen that some of this research and some of the research that kind of Dentsu have put out in the attention economy really compares social channels as all different types of platforms they are you know we're all human human beings we all use these platforms in different ways so we should think about that when it comes to our measurement um factors last question is around then kind of what next for attention where do you think it goes we've obviously spoke about attention now um for the last few years there's a lot of work being done it's moving out of lab environments into testing um you very briefly said emotion which is where i think it goes and i know that 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 opens up some creative testing things that like system one have done for years how do we bring those but where would you like to see attention go next oh i think i think there's a huge amount that we've still got to learn when it comes to attention i think we obviously understand it at a format level and we understand it for our platform and, and the kind of nuances of our platform and i think that if we want to get to a point where we can start to really optimize towards attention, there's a lot more that we can kind of dive into. So, you know, emotion's one of them, but like different creative aspects that are particularly key in driving um, driving attention, but also being able to kind of think about um, optimizing on the fly, I guess, towards towards making sure that we've got the right attention for our campaigns. Love to optimize towards attention. <laughs> um, and, then I think, you know, if we think really long term, and again, this is definitely not something that we're particularly close to now, but I think currently there's a lot of different ways to measure attention and people, you, people do it very differently, right? So if as an industry we can kind of agree on a method or we can come together to think about how we should be, should we, we should be thinking about attention moving forward, there's potential that it can become a really useful metric, right, that, that is kind of universal, but I think we're... I think we're quite a long way away from that at the moment. Cool. So in terms of big takeaways from today is attention is a driver, not your outcome. Make sure that we're taking that into account and that will then help inform um, your format choices. Uh, use the formats um, cleverly, layer them all together, bring in different types of creative to capture that attention. Um, and hopefully we will all start chatting nicely as an industry and um, align on what attention actually should be captured on. 
Um, thank you everyone for listening to us over your lunch. Um, I do believe there is cocktails over at the back, there's more food, um, there is party kicking off at any minute now. Um, if anyone has got any questions about attention, about SNAP in general, please um, just come grab us afterwards or drop us a note. But thank you very much. Thank you very much.